Hey everybody, this is Rust from Metro Game Core. Now, one of the major questions that I always get on this channel has to do with different file types and multi-disc games. And I've done a couple videos about it in the past, but me personally, I've also learned a lot along the way. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how I personally compress and organize all of my files. And specifically here, we're talking about disc-based games. So we're gonna focus mostly on PS1, PS2, and GameCube, but this process can also be used with other systems that have CD-based games, things like Sega CD, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, and so on. And my big takeaway here is that I hate dealing with games that have multiple files for the same game. Therefore, that's gonna be one of the issues we solve here in this video. Now, there are lots of other ways to organize your ROM collection, but for me, this is what I found works best. And so without any further delay, let's jump into it. All right, we're gonna start with PlayStation 1. The first file type we're gonna work with are called CHD files, and we'll also do PBP files, which will work with multiple disc games. Now, CHD is one of my favorite file types to use with emulation. Not only will it compress your files to make them smaller, but it works on a wide variety of games and emulators. And so if you have any of the systems that are listed here and the file type is an IMG, ISO, GDI, or BINQ file, this is all gonna work right here. Now, understandably, there are a lot of people who are kind of intimidated by converting their file library over to CHD. And that's because using the typical CHD program requires you to type in a command line interface. And so people who are not comfortable with writing in command prompt or a terminal window may not like it. However, I recently found there is a CHD program that uses a graphical interface on Windows and it works really well. And so that's what we're gonna do here today. And the program is called NAMDHC or CHD Man Backwards. And I'll have an entire written guide in the video description below that'll have links to each of these programs as well. Either way, what you wanna do here is go to the releases page and then download the most recent release here. We're gonna to wanna to grab two files, the CHD Man EXE file, as well as the NAM DHC file. And you can save these wherever you want as long as you have easy access to them. Now I've saved them directly in the same folder that we're gonna be working in with all of our different game files. And for this, we're gonna start with PlayStation 1. As you can see within my PSX folder, I have three different games here that are using different types of bin and Q files. For example, with Symphony of the Night, we have two bin files and one Q file. The bin files actually hold the data and the Q file just basically tells the emulator where to look. A lot of PS1 games will only come with a single bin or Q file, and so I have that represented here with Crash Team Racing. However, there are other PS1 games that have multiple bin files like this one here. PlayStation PIX is a demo disc that came with the original PS1, and I still love playing it to this day. Now, if you were to throw these files into your SD card for whatever system you're using, for example, the Miu Mini or the Odin or anything else like that, what will probably happen is you'll see all these files at once. And it can be kind of a pain to navigate through and figure out which file you're supposed to actually load. And so by converting these to CHD files, we'll only have one file per game, making it much easier to navigate through your folder. And as a side benefit, it'll also compress these files so you have more storage space as well. So going back to that main folder, we're gonna open up the NAM DHC file right here. And the interface is mostly self-explanatory, but I'll walk you through it anyway. We're gonna click on Add Files, then go into our PSX folder here, and then you can see it's picked up on all of the different Q files. It would be the same if you're using a GDI or ISO file, or even if you had your game still zipped. So once we've selected all of our games, we then wanna select an output folder. So wherever we want these CHD files to be saved, I'm gonna put them right back in that PSX folder. From there, all you have to do is click on that Create CHD button right here. It'll take a couple minutes to run through this program. It'll depend on how many games you're running as well, but once it's done, it'll let you know. In addition, you'll have the option to see a report. We're gonna click, yeah, man, I wanna do it. Within here, you can see how long it took overall, a little bit over one minute, and it'll also confirm that each of those games were successfully created. And so now let's go into that PSX folder, and now we have those CHD files embedded with the other ones. So I'm gonna sort it here by different file type, and yeah, here are those three right here. And so let me select everything but the CHD file so you can get an idea here of how big it is. As you can see, it is 1.68 gigs for these three games. Now, if we grab all three of those CHD files, you can see it's under one gigabyte. And so overall, we had a 42% reduction in file size by going CHD. Not only that, we only have single files for each of these games. So we can delete all these others and we have these entire games right here. 
And so that's why I like CHD files so much. Not only will it simplify your entire ROM library, but it compresses them a bunch as well. And you're not losing any quality in this way either. And as I mentioned earlier, the CHD process works on a number of different systems, including all of these that you see right here. And so if you have a ROM library and it's full of different types of files, then my recommendation here is to use this app to simplify the entire process. It might take you like an entire evening to do this, but it's a great time to open up Netflix, open up a bottle of wine, and just have at it. And when it comes down to it, most of the emulators that are available right now will work with CHD files. Every once in a while, if there's a very old emulator, it may not work, but nowadays everything does, including RetroArch. And so as you can see here, I'm booting right into Crash Team Racing, as well as Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Okay, so that's what I recommend doing for all these CD-based systems, but one system in particular had a lot of multi-disc games. And that again is going to be PlayStation 1. For example, I have a different folder called PSX Multi-Disc, and within here I have Final Fantasy 7. And if you remember, that was a 3-disc game, and so as you can see, it has three different bin and Q files. Now there's a couple different ways we could do this. Number one, we could create three different CHD files, one for each disc, and then you can use something called an M3U file, which is basically a playlist file that'll allow you to pick whichever disc you want. However, as you can imagine, that means you're gonna have one file for every one of those discs, and then also that M3U file. Now there are some tricks to this, like you could hide these CHD files, but it takes a little bit extra work. Instead, my recommendation is actually to use a different file type called PBP. And this essentially is a file type that was used for PlayStation 1 games to work on the original PSP. And so we're gonna use this old program here called PSX2PSP. And this program has been around forever. In fact, I think there are cave paintings about it. It's that old. Anyway, all you wanna do here is download this file and then you wanna unzip it either using 7-zip or WinRare and then put it somewhere that's easy to access. I'm just gonna put it here on my desktop. From there, you wanna open up the PSX to PSP executable file. It's gonna give you an option here to choose between theme mode and classic mode. And so even though the theme mode is a little bit prettier, I've always found that classic mode or classic mode as they spelled it here actually works best. So we're gonna go that route. After you select it, it's gonna open up this window right here. And what you wanna do here is grab each of those disks for your game. And as you can see, you can use up to five disks in one single file. So to start, we're gonna grab disk one from Final Fantasy VII, then we'll go down to the second disk here, and then same thing here, we're going to point it to the second disc of the game. Next, as you can imagine, we're going to do the same thing for the third disc. So we'll pick that third file, then the third file itself. And then we need to pick an output folder. And for this, I'm going to use that same PSX multi-disc folder. From there, you can ignore everything else and then just press this convert button here. Now, I gotta say, this app is very old, and so sometimes it'll just break on you. Like, it won't work, and you'll have to retry it again. And so if you do get an error here, then I would recommend just trying it again. And there's also gonna be times when it finishes the conversion process, but it won't tell you in the menu. And so it's just a little bit buggy by virtue of being a very old program. Either way, with any luck, when it is done, it'll say done, and it'll tell you how much it compressed it as well. So you can see here, it compressed it by 26%. Now, if we go back into that PSX multi-disc folder, you can see right here, it has the serial number of Final Fantasy VII. And if we go inside there, you can see there's a file called eboot.pbp. And again, this is a remnant of having to put it on the PSP back in the day. So all you wanna do here is just change the file name to something that's more familiar like Final Fantasy VII. And after that, we're done. We have the entire game in one single file and it's been compressed by 26%. And so as before, we're gonna use RetroArch to open up this game. And when it starts, you can see here on the bottom right, it says setting disc in tray one out of three. That means it's loading the first disc in the series. Now say you're at a point where you wanna to get to a different disc, like it's saying to switch discs, or you wanna start on a different disc. What you wanna do is go into the RetroArch quick menu. And then within here, go down to the disc control option. Here, what you wanna do is eject the current disc, and then under current disc index, you wanna switch it to whatever disc you actually wanna load. After that, select insert disc, and it's basically the same thing as if you physically put the disc inside. And so, for example, we're using disc two of Final Fantasy VII, but trying to start a new game, which isn't gonna work. And as you can see right here, it's asking us to insert disc one. And so same thing here, we can go back and insert disc one again. We're gonna go back to the quick menu, eject the disc, change it to disc index one, and then insert the disc again. And just like that, the game starts right up. And so that is how you convert your multi-disc games into a single file, and then also how you change your discs within the game. Okay, next let's move over to PlayStation 2. There are two major types of compressed files that you usually will find. We have the CHD files, which are just like what we did with the PS1, but then also we have GZ files, which are made by 7-Zip. And so let me show you that process here. I have three different PS2 games right here. They are all in ISO format. 
And all you really need to do here is have 7-Zip installed on your computer. You can right-click on the file here and then select 7-Zip Add to Archive. And then under Archive Format, you want to change this from whatever it is to G-Zip. Now you can try different compression levels, but I personally use maximum. It just seems to be a good middle ground. And also I like to remove the ISO from the file name. So it's just going to say the name of the game plus GZ. Anyway, that's it. You can go ahead and press OK, and then it'll start converting this from the ISO format to compress it into GZ. Now I like this process because you don't have to install anything additional. You can just right click on it, use 7-zip and you're good. However, the problem here is that it'll take up a lot of system resources to work. So it'll bog your computer down quite a bit. And it's kind of a slow process. For example, here we're using Final Fantasy X and just that one single game took about six and a half minutes. Not only that, you can only do this one game at a time. And so if you have multiple PS2 games, this could take quite a while. And so my solution here is to use that same CHD process we did with PS1 with PS2. And luckily the major emulators for PS2, including PCSX2 and AetherSX2 will use these CHD files. Anyway, the process is the same here. We're just gonna go in, select our three ISO files, and then we'll also put them in the same output folder of PS2. After that, we'll choose create CHD and we're off to the races. The nice thing here is that if we look at the report, it took a little bit under seven minutes to do all three games. And so effectively, this is three times as fast as doing it with GZ files, and you don't have to do them one at a time. You can do them all at once. Now, depending on the bulk of the game itself, you may not get a big reduction in file size. For example, here, we only got 17% average between these three games. However, if you have other PS2 games, they're a little bit more lightweight. Often they can be reduced by a lot more. Either way, we've at least reduced it by 17%, and so that's pretty great too. And so here I am in PCSX2 starting up a game, and yes, Final Fantasy X, Jack and Daxter, and Ratchet and Clank all loaded up perfectly. The other advantage about CHD files over GZ files is that GZ files take a lot longer to load than CHD files. Not only that, within PCSX2, they'll make like a temp file, which can take up additional space. With CHD files, you don't have to worry about any of that. The games are going to load very quickly, and there's not going to be any remnant temporary files. And so this is one of the many reasons why I prefer to use CHD over the GZ files. Okay, next up we're going to do Nintendo GameCube. This one uses a specific compressed file, and I really like this one too, and it's easy to set up. In fact, all you need to have is a more recent version of the Dolphin emulator, which you'll probably already have on your computer if you're going to be playing Nintendo games anyway. And so here in my GameCube folder, you can see I have three games, F-Zero, Luigi's Mansion, and Mario Kart. And I've already used Dolphin to point to these three games within the emulator. And converting these files is super easy. All you have to do is right click on the game and then select Convert File. Now you can convert to multiple different ones, but I prefer the RVZ. It's the most advanced compressor that they have right now. And I'll typically use the standard compression level of five. After that, select Convert. It'll ask you where to save the game, and I'm just going to save it in the same folder. And then it'll convert the game. Depending on the game, it can take anywhere from like 10 seconds to up to a minute. Either way, for this one, you do have to do it one at a time, but it is pretty fast. And so I'm going to speed through the other two games right here, but now let's look at the final result. For some of the chunkier games, like F-Zero GX, as you can see here, we only got 11% file size reduction. But for other games, you have a huge difference. For example, with Luigi's Mansion, we got an 89% file size reduction. And same thing with Mario Kart Double Dash, we got 80% down. And so this is a great way to compress your files very easily without having to use additional software other than the Dolphin emulator itself. Now, if your version of Dolphin doesn't have that option to convert the file, you're probably working with a very old version of that emulator, and so you just want to update it. But that's it. Let's go ahead and start up our games. And yeah, as you can see right here, our GameCube games are working great too. Now I've been messing with the settings in Dolphin, so for example I have the boot logo right here. Let me know if you want a guide on how to do this, it's super simple to set up. And then I'm also using a widescreen hack and then upscaled it to 1080p as well. But long story short, yes GameCube games can be compressed, it's very easy to do, and they work great. And really that's about it right here. I know this video was a little bit longer in terms of guides, but I wanted to show you how the whole process worked from start to finish. My hope here is that instead of having to pick and choose between a bunch of different short videos to figure out how to get certain systems working, this one's going to work for the majority of the issues that you have. And as I mentioned before, I have a written guide linked in the video description that'll talk you through this entire process as well. Either way, I hope you found this video helpful. This would have been really helpful for me when I was first starting out, and so I wanted to share this knowledge with you. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you prefer this system as well, or do you do something else to compress your files? Like I mentioned in the beginning, there are many ways to skin this cat, but this is the one I prefer. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.